In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create an untyped data set at runtime using the Visual Studio.net collection editors. Now, we noted in the previous video and also in the data set concepts video about the value of untyped data sets. We noticed in the previous video also that creating an untyped data set involves kind of a lot of coding on the developer's part. However, there is a way around this. By using these collection editors that you can find from the property box, uh, we can add the columns and the tables that we need within our data set in a very easy manner. Now, this again only applies if you don't need to know it on a somewhat dynamic basis. For example, if, if you're trying to derive it uh, from other settings, maybe an XML file, maybe something from a web service, maybe based on some programmatic logic, this technique may not make as much sense. But if there's another need to create a untyped data set but, also, but know the, uh, the tables and the columns ahead of time, this approach makes a lot of sense. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is go ahead, like we've done in all the previous videos, and drag and drop the employee table from the pubs database onto our designer surface. I'm going to select the properties box. In fact, when I get the properties box open here, I'm going to go ahead and pin it down because we're going to need it quite a bit in this video. So I'm going to select the data adapter, select configure data adapter. The wizard appears, and we've gone through this a number of times, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. I'm going to select Next, select the data connection. I'm going to create SQL statements. I'm going to uh, allow the default selection to be made and click the Next button. Our Select, Insert, Update, and Delete statements have been created. I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. The next thing I'm going to do is go to our toolbox, go to the Data tab, and drag and drop a data set onto our design surface. It's going to ask, do you want it typed or untyped? We want it untyped again. So now what I want to do is, well, we'll do one more thing before we get started. We'll put our button down, like we normally do, and we'll put in our data grid so we can display the values from our data set, and we're all set from a UI perspective. I'm going to go ahead and select the data set and change the name to DS Employee, and then I want you to note that you have a number of uh, collections. You have relations and a tables collection. We'll come back to the relations collection in some future video. For right now, we want to talk about the tables collection. I'll go ahead and select it, and then click the ellipsis button to the right-hand side. And when I do, the tables collection editor appears. I'm going to go ahead and select Add, and that gives us one member with the properties on the right-hand side. I'm going to change the name of that table to employee and select enter. And now notice also that we have collections here as well. We have constraints, which we'll talk about at a future point in time. And we also have columns, which is what we're interested in right now. So I'm going to select the ellipsis box to the right-hand side and another editor appears, allowing us to add columns to the table that we just defined. So here we go. I'm going to click Add. The first column appears. I'm going to change the column name to Emp ID, and I'm going to leave the type as System.String. I'm going to add the next column, change its name to FName, Leave it to system.string. Add a third column, which is m init for middle initial, and leave it as system.string. We'll change the next one to l name for last name. Leave it as system string. We'll select uh, job ID. And this needs to be uh, an int 16, so we'll drop down make our selection. I'll click Add. Now we need job level. And that needs to be an int 16 as well. And then finally, we'll need our hire date. And that needs to be a system update time. 
Now, there's a lot of other properties that we can set on a given column. And we have a property box that allows us to see all of the properties that we can set on a given column. Now, I'm not going to change these right now, but we can do things such as, for example, set the maximum length of a given row, or sorry, a given column value. Um, we can select whether it's read only or not, whether it should be a unique constraint be placed on it, um, and auto increment and things of that nature, allow and null. So there's a lot of uh, interesting things that we can do in this collections editor, but we're done for now. I'm going to go ahead and click close on this, and let's see. We're going to also, I guess I changed the name, but not the actual table name. So we'll put employee here, and that changed the member. So excellent. We're in good shape now. I'm going to go ahead and hit close here, and we're all set. I'm going to go ahead and hit save, and then I need to still add two lines of code because I want it to uh, fill the data set from the SQL data adapter and then also bind to the data grid. So I've taken the liberty of pasting some code in which calls the SQL, SQL data adapter still method, passes in the data set and the name of the data table we want to use, and then does the same for the data grid, calls the set data binding method, and then passes in the data set and the uh, table name as well. So go ahead and select save, and if we did everything right, it should work the first time. And it seems to work. We get all of our values into the table. Very good. Now, as is customary, we want to show how to reference items within our data sets. So when we click on the button, maybe we want to display the last name. I'm going to go ahead and double click the button so we get our usual little area here. And this time we're going to take a slightly different approach. Instead of using the names of the uh, tables and columns, we're going to use ordinal values instead. So I'm going to type in DS employee dot tables dot zero for the first table in the tables collection, which should be employee dot rows sub zero, so the first row. And then we're going to open up another set of parentheses and type in the number three, and that should be the column for the last name if we did it right. So I'm going to go ahead and save and run our application again. Notice that we didn't get any benefit from the IntelliSense uh, because we have an untyped data set. We noted that the last video. I click our button, and the last name is Accordi. So if we look on the, our first row, our third column, Accordi, which is our last name column, is indeed the value that we're trying to pull out. So for the sake of completeness, we've shown many different ways uh, to use data sets, to create data sets, whether they are strongly typed or untyped data sets, uh, and you'll use them, all these different techniques, given the various situations that you'll run to as you're developing your own applications. But we hope you enjoy this video. Thank you.